Okay, make sure this is working up. Yay. All right, so I've been letting this sit for a while. Let me go ahead and load up Quadro just in case I need it. Uh, in case you never used it, Quadro is a image reference viewer that I use. Kind of keeps things, keeps keeps me uh, my reference easy to kind of browse through here. Um, so we've got our tech suit here, and I'm basically going through, and everywhere there's a rib divided on here, I'm basically giving it a new color. I'm going to eventually do panel loops. I've kind of got one here. If we go into solo mode, I hit F to frame. You can kind of see what I'm going for here. Just kind of this ribbed undersuit here that we're going to put new clothing on top of. Uh, but in order to do that, there's a couple different techniques. We'll go over them in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up these ones here. On these ones in particular, I've just retopologized. Um, I've just retopologized them, so there we go. Hey, Seagull, thanks for showing up. Um, let's see if I have any topics here now that I think about it. Let's see, streaming topics. Is there anything we didn't cover last time? Um, I don't have anything in Super in particular, but you guys holler if you see anything of interest or want me to go into anything in detail. It should be pretty straightforward this morning, though. Um, so I'm going to turn on polyframe here, go out of solo mode, and now if I turn on transparency, and you don't have to turn on ghost, but um, you can kind of see through the object here. I'm just going to go through, and I'm just going into my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, if you don't have it set to a hotkey, and just alt dragging over there. Um, if I only want to do operations on a face, I can hover over a point, hold down spacebar, check do nothing hover over an edge, hold down spacebar, check, do nothing, and that way I'm guaranteed to only kind of be messing with um, faces here. So I can just basically go in and isolate these and hit control W and that'll give me a new polygroup. Of course I want to hit X to go across X symmetry while I do this. Um, I can also do hover over face, do polygroup, a single poly, and then that way I can just kind of go through and kind of tap these to kind of give me a new polygroup. Um, but for me, it's usually a little bit faster to kind of hold down Alt and just grab what I need and then isolate by Control Shift clicking and just putting those on there. Um, all right, so we've got that rib here. Now, if I if I get kind of lost, I can always just click on this one here and kind of see the ribbing a little bit better. Then I can switch back. Um, you can also go into the Preferences menu here and go under Draw. And if you play around with the transparent uh, front and back opacity, um, you can kind of change how opaque your object is, but I generally just leave those alone. And um, hey everybody, thanks for showing up. So I'm just alt, holding down alt with my Z modeler brush to kind of paint these areas and then isolating them, hit control W. Um, that one didn't look like it had too much of a change, but it is giving it a new polygraph for these. And basically why I'm doing this is so that I can give kind of a ribbed tech suit look. This is going to be her very, very bottom layer here. Um, let's see, did I overshoot that one? Yeah, a little bit I did. And again, just the modeler brush hovering over the faces and then isolating them. Um, now you can also, let me show you this. Um, you can go through here and you can paint these and then you can switch your mode over to polygroup a single poly then you can tap and then just keep tapping alt to get a new polygroup as well that's another option so maybe we'll use that just to just to ensure i mean it, it should it, you know the only reason i might do that in this case is because um, when you want to select a polygroup, you can hold down control shift and if you tap on a vertice, usually you're, it'll do a better job. Um, sometimes if you have no vertices to tap on, it'll kind of just isolate a couple polygroups and then you can isolate it like that. Not a big deal. You can also hold down control shift, go to select lasso and do edge rings. Um, but then there's a triangle here, so it gets kind of difficult and then this one's going to be hard to select, so it gets kind of painful sometimes um, or not ideal. Um, so in this case, yeah, I'll, and it, you know, I don't have to go out of polygroup mode in order to alt select. So I can just again tap and then, or tap hold with my tablet and then alt tap to cycle through polygroups here. Um, yeah, let's go alt drag through here. And again, not super exciting stuff, but necessary stuff just to kind of get some panels going here. 
and just to kind of give some uh, visual interest that you know this can be busy and noisy but we are going to cover this up with some areas for the eyeball to breathe not to worry but this is where we got to start out now if we do have a polygroup here that is very close again it doesn't matter if it's close or not but if it bothers you uh, you can do polygroup polygroup all and then you can just again cycle through that one if you'd like uh, let's see we'll click back here okay we got both of those here and then there we go make sure I'm hitting these and then uh, yeah originally I had sculpted these now you don't have to go through and sculpt these obviously you can just go through and poly paint it on um, but I like the sculpted look I guess hey everybody all right, I'm going to try and get to this as fast as possible because I know this is not exciting to watch here. Polygroup, hold down Alt, polygroup all this, hold down Alt, polypaint all this, and then tap and Alt. Um, and again, just kind of switching back and forth to make sure I'm getting all those. Now I'm holding that Alt with Z modeler brush and then tapping and then tapping Alt to get a new polygroup here. And I think this is the last one I have to do luckily and then we can get on to actually making the tech suit. It's been a while since I've actually been in here doing tech suit stuff. There we go. All right, so now we've got, if we go into solo mode here, turn off transparency, turn on polyframe. So there's my new tech suit here that I'm going to use panel loops with probably. Um, I could go in and just use the modeler. We'll see how it goes. And then here's my original sculpt, which I'll keep around just for a bit, just to make sure um, I get everything I need. Oh, we do have one more. So if I wanted to show these two here, I'm gonna click this leg here to turn its eyeball on. I can turn these eyeballs off manually. Uh, if I have an object selected, a subtool selected, and I tap the eyeball off, it's gonna turn all the subtools off, which they are. If I tap it on, it's gonna turn all the subtools on. Of course, I'm in solo mode here. Here we go. Um, if I just want to see these two, it's easy enough just to tap the one you want to just see and then tap the eyeball to turn everything off. Tap the nameplate to turn just that on and then tap the eyeball on anything else. Just a faster way to kind of go through that. Um, if we're just doing one side here, I, when I remesh this, I did both sides uh, across the x-axis. You, you can go ahead and delete that if you'd like. Not a huge deal. And then uh, again, we can go back into transparency mode here. And then I'm just going to hold down Alt and paint through here. And we'll switch back. Yeah, that seems right. And then we'll switch back to a polygroup. Um, and, it, and in this case, since we're Alt painting, it doesn't matter if we do polygroup all or a single poly um, because it treats anything that you Alt paint as a single poly anyway. So FYI. So I'm gonna rely on you guys to keep me awake during this really, really boring process. And again, if you see anything that's odd um, or you don't understand, just holler it out and I'll, I'll answer anything you need me to. Um, now I gotta decide, okay, let's go back to this thing here. Do I want, looks like these are going up and over. Okay, so, Turns out I do want these polygroups to kind of go up and over this ridge, uh, but I didn't go up and over when I was alt dragging. It's not a big deal. All I got to do is hover over a face, do polygroup, a single poly, tap it, hold down, sh uh, oops, tap, tap, shift. Is it not doing it? Let's see. Polygroup, a single poly. Let's go into solo mode here. It should be inheriting. There we go. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't inheriting that when I was hitting shift. Uh, so you can tap the polygroup, hit shift, and that'll go ahead and inherit uh, that new polygroup here. And then you can just go through and just continue that polygroup back. So again, I'm tapping a face, 
holding holding down while I'm tapping, tap shift while I'm holding down, and that just grabs that poly group here, and I can just continue that all the way back. And let's go back out of solo mode here. And looks like we need all of these. I gotta switch back to poly group, a single poly. Tap Alt and there we go. And this is one of those one of these things where wish I had some music. So I know I'd be bored watching this too. I'll tap here. And then one more loop here. Up and around this ridge. And there's no guarantees that this is going to work beautifully. I think it will makes sense in my head. Um, the first one that I did, it was a different technique. Uh, it was just that little neck piece that we showed at the very beginning, and I'll show you how to do that in a second as soon as we're done. Um, but that was just using slicing and zero mesh. This one I ended up having to, the more complex it got, the more it became apparent that uh, zero mesh was gonna be kind of hit or miss on the remesh with a group which isn't a huge, huge deal. Does this just continue all the way around? I guess it does. Let's follow this around then. Um, and then that one doesn't go up and over. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'll feel great this morning. I usually like to hop on and like do something. And uh, today it's going to be a little bit more boring. But you know what? We'll get this out of the way. It'll be good. We'll have something. And, and you know, the whole reason I'm even bothering modeling this is just because for some reason when I first started out um, in ZBrush, I would be really concerned about controlling everything. When I worked at, it was, you know, my first ZBrush pipeline was DC Universe Online. And working on that was very ZBrush centric. That got me to kind of let go of that control I thought I needed. Like I had to be like, oh, everything has to be. So I would model everything first and then bring it into ZBrush and just use ZBrush for like a little bit of like, I'll put some wear and tear on the edges or anything that would be a pain to model. Um, and then what that ended up turning into is by the time I got to the end of the DC Universe Online character pipeline when we've been doing it for years, um, I didn't do anything outside of ZBrush. Like going out of ZBrush was kind of a pain to me. It was kind of, I did, if I, I would just start out with the, it didn't matter what I was modeling, I would start out in ZBrush as just like a cube or something. Um, so that's kind of the transition I made. Uh, but also on the D DC Universe pipeline, we had to move so fast that we didn't really have time to go in and fully flesh out everything. It was more like, you know, you're only going to see the character from a top three quarter view. You're never going to zoom in on it too close. Character creates probably your worst case scenario. And that even then you could kind of fake a lot of it once you baked it down because the, the overall, um, the budget for the characters wasn't too high. So it wasn't really a whole lot of point to going in and modeling all this stuff out. Um, so, but over the years, what I've realized is I've gone kind of backwards. I'm still, I still do everything in ZBrush that I can because it's, it's faster um, than not, generally speaking. But what happened is I felt the need to just model everything out. Like on DC Yo, I would just use Lazy Mouse and carve it in. Damien Standard, go into Standard Brush, clean it up a little bit and call it a day because I knew when I baked it out, it wasn't going to be that big a deal. But now that I've been doing other projects for so long, I got really caught up in just like modeling every single thing out. Um, why don't I use music? Well, generally, especially on this channel, I don't use music because I'm usually flapping my mouth going over technique stuff. This this is the first day and this is the first week in a long time um, 
where I've actually just started out just doing something, which is going back to the tech suit that we started weeks ago, months ago, actually, at this point. Um, so it wasn't really an issue just because music would only get in the way of me flapping my mouth. But uh, I might rethink that if I'm going to be getting into just kind of going in here and doing stuff, which isn't all that exciting. Like this, for example. But yeah, if, uh, if you do a uh, music thing and they're, I don't know, every, every you know, we have this, uh, this area where everybody, like even when you think it's royalty free for some reason, it ends up not being or half being, or there's some certain rules or regulations or stipulations. And next thing you know, your YouTube channel gets muted. Uh, and by the way, if you're watching this and you want to go back and see the making of all of this, plus a whole lot more. Um, go to the Pixelogic YouTube channel and you'll see the video on demand of all of these things and more. All the other people who do the ZBrush channel as well have their own little section, their own little playlist. You can go check out the Pavlovich Workshop playlist and that'll be my stuff. You can also go to my Twitch channel, which is PavMike, and we go over kind of kind of similar things just a little bit different projects uh, this one I'm trying to wrap up the sci-fi female I might continue this one over into my channel as well just to kind of make some headway on it because I've been slacking and let's grab these last couple here um, so how did you add a polygon to a polygroup so anytime you have any polygon on your screen and ooh, we have, okay, I didn't finish these up here. Um, so you have a polygon up here and this, this one polygon is left over from the original polygroup here. So if you want to add any of these polygons to a polygroup, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can um, kind of isolate them. And then if you go down here to your polygroups menu, um, you can do group visible, which is alt G. And then you can just group whatever's on your screen visible. Um, you can also see there's a group mask, uh, polygons and then there's a group mask clear mask this is the one I use the most even though group visible is available I almost exclusively use control W because that allows you to not only hold down control and mask something out of whatever's masked it'll group it and then clear your mask um, it also allows you to if you have nothing masked it'll just group um, whatever's on your screen like so um, so I generally just use control W it's just one um, one hotkey to recognize there or learn so that's probably the easiest way um, of course you can also hover over a face go to B to bring up your brush menu Z to go to your Z brushes that start with Z and then M to grab your Z modeler brush and then if you hover over a face you can choose poly group a single poly and then you can just tap um, if you tap and hold and then tap alt you'll get a new poly group and then you can just go through here and just tap and then assign a poly group to that, which I'm assuming if I go out of solo mode here, yeah, all these will be the same. Um, that's a little bit slower because you can't tap and drag. So I tend to do hold down alt to paint these white. As you can see, it painted all those white. And then at this point you could do like Q mesh and extrude a face or whatever you want. But again, if we still have poly group, a single poly, you can tap, hold alt, and that'll just cycle through poly groups. And that's what I've been doing uh, this whole time. Well, cool. Um, otherwise, I can just start singing. Hopefully, if I can think of interesting thing to say, which is sometimes difficult this early in the morning. But um, like I said, if you guys have questions, let me know. It gives me something to talk about. Um, if you have to pack UVs and make it kind of neat, do you send the retopoed meshes out to my etc.? Um, uh, hey, everybody! Thanks for showing up. I. I sometimes do. It depends on how. Usually, ZBrushes uh, will do at work. We'll do a pass called uh, a grandma pass, and that's basically getting something in the game that's good enough for if your grandma was to look at it, she would think it was a good asset or it was done, and you know she'd be like, "Oh, what a good asset, honey." Um, so usually, I don't carry. T I don't care too much about um, my UVs certainly at the beginning because it's just about getting it in game and evaluating it with materials and your high res detail and making sure it reads um, past that point as we continue to refine once things get approval um, we'll go through and do UVs and then um, you know and even ZBrush is fine for that a lot of the time if you need ultimate control yeah use your favorite um, 
three D packing solution, and they're all good now. I think um, it's been a while since you know I, I use a bunch of different things to do my UVs for sure. If anything, just to kind of keep up on the new stuff, which I have been kind of slacking on that as well. And actually, let's see if I go back here, these kind of continue in here. I'll leave that alone. I'll make that a separate one here. And we'll just do this one here. And then all of these can be one. All right, almost done. This is, again, this is the last piece here. And when I'm done with this, I'll save it, and I can also bring in the original. Well, we got the original sculpt, so I don't need to do that. I basically took the original sculpt, which is all one piece, and then split that up for retopologizing manually with uh, Z-spheres. Um, you can use Slice, and I'll show you that technique that I did. Uh, it worked okay in some instances, but like I was saying earlier, it got a little bit squirrely depending on the complexity of the object, keeping groups and stuff. And that might have been my error as far as like, you know, trying to get it to do what I wanted it to do. Uh oh, we got one square left. Okay, that goes to that part here. So let's grab all these and then we'll just tap through. And I think we are done. <gasps> Everybody still good? Um, have I ever used Blender? If no, why not? I haven't. Um, I've been meaning to, but most production pipelines I've been on have been ZBrush centric and Maya centric. So nothing against it. Just never had to get in there and use it in the past 12 years. All right. So we got this on. We got this polyframe on here. So, okay. So now if I've got all of these things, let's go talk a little bit about how I did this one, which should be, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. I'll text pseudo 4. And because I lost the original on that one, I went ahead and deleted it. I'm going to load in one of the older tools here. We'll do text pseudo 1. Now let's walk you through the process. So we've got our text suit lady here. And like I was doing, like I was kind of showing you earlier, let me go ahead and preferences. If you, if you don't, if you're have this cursor kind of flopping around. Sometimes I'll go into preferences, edit, uh, turn off a line cursor to surface. That just keeps it flat. It doesn't change the function of the brush at all. Um, but when I'm not doing Z modeler type stuff and I don't need to see the face uh, differences of what I'm working on, I'll just usually turn that off. And now I can go through here. I think I deleted that. I'm just, so I'm just alt tapping through my sub tools here and then getting rid of them. So just so you can kind of see the tech suit by itself here. So here's her tech suit. She's got um, she's got layers to her tech suit. So she's got um, this is her rib tech suit that's going to be on the bottom. Now, if I just kept it ribbed and that was all you saw, it'd be kind of busy. So what I wanted to do is break that up with a little bit more plain cloth, um, or you know, this could be whatever material we want it to be eventually. Uh, and then I broke that up with extra bits of armor and stuff. And then she's got. Uh, a spine that goes down that we have completed in the other one all the way down to our boots here and so there we are and then she's got her hands built in here so she's got gloves on so we'll be refining those today as well but if we go to our tech suit here what i basically did was okay here's her tech suit here's the ribbed parts i'm going to go ahead and build out all of her rib parts and put the other stuff over it you don't have to do that if you're you know if you know you know you're not going to see something underneath and don't bother making it but um this gives me an opportunity to kind of go through and do beauty renders uh, at various stages of undress to for lack of a better term but because i'm building her in layers i can do a cool tech suit render and pose her out and i can do a cool uh, half armored render and i can do a cool armored render and then finally a cool mech render which we have that in another file um if you want to see that, I'm going to fix the legs on this thing. For some reason, I've gone through this whole process and I haven't really, let's see, mech suit. I'm not really fond of the legs at all. Uh, let's go out of solo mode here. There we go. So here's the, she sits inside of this thing, kind of like a Hulkbuster type, just armored thing. So you can see in here, that's where her arms go. And she actually has these two. Um, I am going to change that too. Right now, she looks like she's grabbing onto like, 
just a, a pole with a button on it, but that's obviously not going to be articulate enough. So I'm actually going to go through and wrap her fingers and like put wires up in her upper arms and down her back as kind of like a neuro uh, system that will kind of follow her movement so that this thing is uh, kind of does that. But we'll go back here and yeah, this is the original. So if I go into solo mode here, Actually, you know what? Let's not go into solo mode. Let's actually turn the eyeball off for that and then turn the face pike back on just so we're just saying this one. And the easiest one that I did was this one right here. And this one worked fine with Ziri Mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this part out. And we're just going to isolate this out. Let's go ahead and grab all of this. Again, this is just one solid sculpted piece. And now I'm deciding how I would like to refine this thing. So I've got masked here. If I want to kind of sharpen this mask edge up, I'm going to hold down Control Alt and tap, and that'll sharpen that up. Of course, you can go over here to your masking menu and do all of your sure blur and sharpen and stuff like that. But all you can also do it out here, just you know, Control Tap or Control Tap to blur, Control Drag to in, um, unmask, all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead and undo that. And sometimes it's it is good to mask. Uh, invert your mask and you can kind of see, oh, those edges are a little bit dirty. Okay, so now with this, I can do, again, Control W to do Control to group mask, clear masks, isolate that, and go ahead and split that off, which for you guys would be under uh, the split menu over here. And uh, that was just split visible, split visible, yeah, split hidden, sorry. Uh, and then we got this thing here. So now, if I'm going across symmetry here, I can just mirror and weld later. I can also just start slicing and mirror and weld whenever I'd like, uh, because you know, slice. If we go hold on Control Shift, go into slice, and you slice across this thing, it's putting a perfectly sliced line through your mesh and also giving it a new poly group, which is perfect for this thing in particular. Um, however, it only does it on one side, which in this case is fine because I can just mirror and weld it. So, for example, I can just go through here and just slice where I want my panels to go. And again, it's going to do. I don't want that, but again, if I'm going to mirror and weld this thing. Not a huge deal. So let's go through and slice this thing up. And you could do this for all the different parts, um, which I actually did. You can also tap Alt once to kind of bend it. And there we go. Uh, if I want this to be the same, uh, you would go to Deformations Mirror and then Geometry Modified Topology Mirror and Weld. I'm just going to go to my custom menu here, do a quick mirror. Um, mirror and Weld. Oops. Let's go ahead. I did split hidden, right? Sometimes it'll bring things back. Just go ahead and do geometry, modify, topology, delete, hidden. There we go. And now we just have it mirrored on both sides. And at this point, we can go ahead and just panel loops it. Uh, I'm, I do want to clean up these borders here because if I'm going to Ziri Mesh, it'll sometimes want to build in these alias looking parts. So I'm going to go over here to masking, turn off everything but border, control tap to invert that, deformations. Let's do a polish by features open circle. And that'll just kind of polish those borders there. So now what I can do, and you don't have to zero mesh this thing. If you want to, you can go straight into uh, edge loop here. Um, you can go straight into panel loops here, and that's a little bit heavy. Let's do thickness of 0 0.001. Now we can do a little bit more than that. Let's do 0 0.0025. There we go. So you can kind of already start just panel loopsing this thing. Um, I tend to prefer uh, a zero meshed mesh. Uh, and one of the problems is it kind of goes to this crevice. And now I can decide at this point if I do, let's go down here to zero measure. Uh, well, we'll do panel loops as well. So if I do panel loops here, you're going to see it kind of, number one, it kind of polishes it a little bit. So it smooths it out just a tad, which is usually okay. Uh, we have double sided on, so it does one whole piece. If I do control shift, control shift A, which is grow visibility, grow all, you're going to see there's a whole piece right there and it gives it. Um, one, two, three, four, five uh, loops, which is dictated here. So there's the number of loops I have. And if you want to see this bevel profile, so here's the bevel right here. If you click that, you're going to see, oh, there it is. And this midline is where it meets. So you can kind of bevel things and they'll they'll touch. Uh, if I go out here, oops, it's going so much. If I go here, you're going to see these bevels both come out, go up and over and down, and they kind of meet in the middle. And that's, you know, there's a little bit of space in between there. Imagine this line right here is the middle line. So you can change all of those um, properties as well as the, how the bevel amount, the elevation, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but if I do want a line down the middle, what I have to do is we've got a slice here. I can slice 
down the middle and that gives a different polygroup on both sides and uh, now when I do a panel loops it'll go ahead and build in that midline here um, so that was how I did the first one and that was kind of playing around with these panel loop settings here so if we kind of play with this here um, what elevation does is you'll see as I hit panel loops it kind of bumps out um, if you drop elevation to zero and then hit panel loops uh, let's drop it to negative 100 if you drop it to negative 100 it'll keep this outer shell where it is and start your paneling uh, deeper so if you don't want to bump out past where you are if that's the limits of where you want to go set that to negative 100 um, but by default it's set to 100 and it just starts where you were and this bumps out uh, in this case it's not a huge deal uh, but it's all you know it's all right now if you did want new geometry in here that's where I would use zero measure uh, in that case I'm just gonna go back to where we were mirrored across the uh, midline here I'll do zero measure across the x-axis which it'll do automatically if I have X turned on and what zero measure is is if we go here uh, so I have a 3000 polygons which isn't terrible and again, this is just my high res. You can use this for game res as well, but in this case, I'm not. I'm gonna do uh, keep groups. You're gonna see smooth groups is turned on as soon as I turn that on. I'm gonna turn that down to zero. Uh, adaptive size is how much it's gonna look at my surface variation and kind of build in edge loops to maintain that variation. I'm gonna drop that down to like say 10. I don't need it to build that in. The lower it goes, the more it's just gonna be concerned about evenly spaced quads. So I'll just turn that up just a little bit and we don't need any of these other options. I'm going to do half instead of a target polygon count and just hit zero mesh. And there, it'll give me new geometry. It'll keep my polygroups for me and now I can just go through here and do panel loops with new geometry. I can keep hitting half as well and uh, that'll just keep dropping that fidelity for me. Uh, you're going to see it starts doing a little bit of weird stuff. So it's at this point, it kind of, you know, if I go through here and kind of help it out and clean it up a little bit, it'll give me a slightly better result uh, but anyway we can just let's try zero mesh half and also play with the settings here to see what that gets you here but again it's keeping our groups now at this point we have um, and if we want to we can actually go in with our Z modeler brush and it looks like it's doing eh, you know that's, that one's good enough seems to be all right so now we have the new geometry and then at this point we could grab half of these actually no let's turn off X and I'm gonna grab these ones that go across the middle here and I'm going to hold down alt and then control W and then grab this one here hold down alt control W and again I'm just giving it that midline poly group so when I do my panel loops and this one we'll leave alone um, so while I'm panel loopsing this thing, it'll do a line down the middle. And then we can go back up to our edge loop panel loops. It should have kept our settings. And we can hit panel loops, and there we go. And that's just a little bit nicer result. You can hit D, which is your dynamic preview, and you can kind of see what that's doing. And you can go in here, increase polygroups and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Are you using a Cintiq? I heard from a couple artists that they prefer it in ZBrush. I don't. Um, mostly because I prefer being portable so I have I'm just using a Wacom tablet and for me starting out if I was you know I started out when Cintiqs were still very new or maybe before Cintiqs I don't really remember having Cintiqs anywhere I worked but um they were very new very expensive at the very least and uh, I finally ended up using them at Sony but even while I was using them at Sony uh, by the time I got the Sony, I was already used to using a tablet. It wasn't like, oh, I need to look at my screen and put my point right where my hand goes because I'm used to drawing in a sketchbook. That was already behind me, so that wasn't a nece necessity. And uh, it's just easier ergonomically. I'm, when I tend to use a Cintiq, I tend to kind of lean over it and get my face really close to a monitor, which is number one bad for my back. I need to kind of lean back when I sit down because my hip flexors tend to tense up if I sit for too long, leaning forward. And then also my face that close to a monitor, I like to get my eyes away from the monitor if I can, especially if I'm gonna be working 12, 14 hours a day. And number two, uh, economy of line or economy of movement, really. Uh, if I have my arm up all day and I'm not ambidextrous, so I'm not, I, don't have, I can't switch over to my left hand 
ever. So what happens is after 14 hours of using a Cintiq, my right arm is turfed and then I start having right arm problems. Whereas if I'm using a tablet, it's down where I need it to, I can kind of rest all day and I'm, I get much more work done than having my arm up. Uh, of course, these are just my personal experiences. I know a lot of artists who live and die by their Cintiq. Me personally, uh, no thanks, not my thing. But I think I'm in the, the, the very, very much minority on that opinion. Now, of course, you could continue going down here and masking these things out and then going through and slicing. Uh, it's going to have a little bit more of a problem. We don't need this anymore. So, oh, well, I guess we can keep talking about that a little bit more. So another option you can do is uh, you're going to see when we pan loops this thing. Uh, it does a great job. And it, you have double on, so it has all of these things, and they're all double-sided here. If you wanted to, so if you clap, grab this one, Control-Shift-A, it's all one singular piece. And if you go in here and hit D to do your dynamic preview, you're going to see, you can kind of see through the back a little bit, which if, she's, if you put like a rubber just sheath back there, uh, you, you won't be able to see through it. Uh, but in this case, if you wanted to not make it uh, double, so they're all one piece here, just undo back through. And what you can do, one of the things you can do, is you can turn double off. And then when you pan a loops, it looks the same. But when you hit D, um, they're just pods or they're just pads kind of sitting on uh, a back piece here. Now, this back piece doesn't have a back to it. Uh, but when you, you can go through here and smooth these apart, and you're going to see it's kind of like, you know, a piece of, it's like leathery or rubbery, you know, as opposed to a single individual panel. Um, if you wanted to give it thickness, what you can do is hover over face. Q mesh, all polygons. We're going to pull this back. And you don't have to use Q mesh. You can use extrude in this case. Uh, you're going to see it flipped my vertices here, or my face normals, vertex normals. So I'm going to go down here to display properties and just flip those back. And now I have a uh, back piece thickness here. And so in order to isolate just these front pieces, because I don't want to panel loops this thing, because it'll panel loops anything that's a polygroup. So it'll panel loop this polygroup, panel loop this polygroup, and then start paneling these polygroups. So I'm going to control shift click this back one, do control shift X to expand, and then control shift drag to invert. And now I just have these visible. And now I am free to go through here and do panel loops. Uh, if we turn double back on, we can do panel loops, and that'll go ahead and panel loops these as double. And then uh, it kind of just separates it out. So now we have all of these individual pieces. And then we have our original piece here. If we go here, Control Shift A, you're going to see it just popped those panels right off of there. Probably not ideal. So what you can do is you're paneling. You can turn, uh, if you turn double off, it'll go ahead and uh, keep those all the same. So we do Control Shift, Control Shift A. Now they're just pads sitting on top of a back piece here that has thickness. And I believe you can also do, um, let's see, double append. I can do append here and we can turn double on. So then when I do panel loops, it'll go ahead and we have our original mesh back here. So if we do control shift, control shift A, here's our original mesh. And then we have all of these panels out here that just appended. So you can kind of, uh, oh yeah, and the reason why, uh, so when, it, when I do panel and append, it keeps this polygroup and it also keeps the original polygroup on the inside. Uh, if you don't want that, there's another option you can do. Never fear, ZBrush full of options here. You can do uh, regroup panels. So now when we do panel loops, um, we'll go ahead and just get a control shift A and then all of these uh, will be the same. Now, of course, these front panels are gonna be all the same polygroup here, but at least they'll be separate from your original appended polygroup. So many options here. So we'll go back to our original one here. Um, oh, that's another good point. So um, Kalina mentioned that your pencil isn't in the way. So when you're drawing on a sketchbook, um, you know, it's nice because you're getting the feedback of like, oh, my pencil's right here and I'm moving my hand and there's a line appearing and that's kind of used to what we're used to doing for the first however many years of our lives. Um, when you're using a tablet, I'm not even looking. My tablet's down here. Uh, I'm not even looking where my hand is. But when I move my hand, my point still moves. So it just takes you a minute. Eh, not a minute. Maybe it'll take you a whole week to kind of get used to moving your hand and not looking at it and drawing. Um, but the other good thing is when you're on a Cintiq, you know, your hand is going to be end up covering up uh, a lot good healthy portion of your screen here. So it just 
yeah, I probably would get annoyed by that. It's been a long time since I've used this Cintiq. Um, it always bugs me though, because it's always like, oh, they're so nice. You know, it'd be so nice to have one, but I would never, ever, ever use it. So now that we've learned all of that, and I think, you know, this is probably old news for a lot of you, but just in case, uh, if you're, you are new to ZBrush and this is all just gobbledygook to you, go to the PictureLogic, um, www.pixelogic.com and you can download a trial of ZBrush. You can watch the Z Classroom. You can go to my YouTube channel and that has a ton of intro to ZBrush. You can go through a, a lot of different tutorials you can go through. We model uh, uh, Jake and Fiona, Finn and Fiona, Finn, not Jake. And uh, what else did we model? We modeled a boot and a Pokemon ball and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, so I just did a delete all there. And what is this? This is our, this is our mech armor. We don't need any of that either. So we'll go back here. And there's there. So this one I opted for uh, just putting these on here. And then I've hold on shift. Yeah. So I did double on. And that just kind of doubled these panels up and kept our original mesh here. So I can unmask that. Uh, wait, did I just Dynamesh that together? No, okay. So I'll turn Dynamesh off. And then I have, if I do Shift D, you'll see uh, that's the original sliced mesh. Um, thank you, Till2D. The uh, question is, how about panel loops and 3D printing? Do they have to meet in the middle? Great work so far. So for 3D printing, yeah, if you want a watertight mesh and they're not meeting in the middle, you might even want to go in here and overlap. Let's talk a little bit about that because that's kind of a fun thing. So we're going to go into Sphere 3D. I'm just going to grab a Sphere Primitive here, go into Edit Mode, make Poly Mesh 3D. Go into Polyframe Mode and just for a little bit f of fun, let's go ahead and do a slice. We'll elongate this thing and we'll go through here and slice this thing and then we'll go through here and slice this thing. And again, we're slicing all the way through. And all, again, I'm holding down shift and snapping to the side view here. And I have perspective turned off, so it does it straight through. Uh, and then I can go through here, control shift, select rectangle. And then we'll just select all these ones, control W. And then we got these top two ones. So we're going to go over here to geometry, zero measure. We'll just do half, adapt the size down to zero and get brand new geometry here. Uh, whoops, keep groups, smoothing down to zero. There we go. <laughs> That'll help. Nice new geometry. So now if we start doing panel loops on this thing, um, so there's our panel loops here. Let's change that bevel up to like 77. And if we turn polish down to zero, that'll kind of keep my corners nice and sharp. And let's also turn up thickness so we can kind of start seeing. Let's turn it way up. There we go. Um, it kind of had a little bit of a problem over here because of that little triangle here. I can alleviate that. Let's do, let's turn X on. And then we'll hold down Alt and Zero Mesh. Let's see if that just does something different. Or does Zero Mesh same? There we go. Zero Meshing same seemed to get rid of that. Although it may have introduced some problems up here as well. Weird. Let's go ahead and I'm going to hover over this face and I'm going to do a delete single poly here. Good enough. Okay, so when I go ahead and panel loops these things, you're gonna see, oh boy. Okay, let me grab this one here. Looks like we gotta delete this face there. Panel loops. Okay, so uh, now that we have these things, you're gonna see the bevel. If I do Control Shift, Control Shift A, um, another just, I'm just gonna drive this home here. We have an edge loop panel loops and it's this bevel profile here that's kind of going up and over. And this this point right here, if I move this up, that is the midpoint between two panels. So if you move this up to the midpoint, bring everything back, hit Control Z to go back through. And now that these are meeting, we do panel loops. Now you're gonna see they're meeting right in the middle. And in fact, if you're 3D printing and you want just a watertight envelope, I would maybe even extend these past just a bit just to ensure that there's actually a little bit of overlap and then and I'll go through here and just kind of overlap them a bit. Um, do Control Shift, Control Shift A. You can also change this bevel profile. You can do as crazy stuff as you want. You can like drag this off. You can drag any points off and then you can click and drag any points on. Uh, you're gonna see it comes back kind of 
you can go through here and make this tighter or rounder. If you want to make it super tight, just drag it off and then drag it back on and it'll make it a point. And then you can kind of reset this thing back up uh, however you want. And then of course you can do the craziest shapes that you want to. However, you need the loops to support it. So if I do that shape here and do panel loops, you're going to see it gives me that shape here, but it's only got one, two, three, four, five loops to do it with. So that's where your loop fidelity comes in. So we've got five loops here. If we add that like to 12 loops and then do panel loops, you're going to see um, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 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 12. So now if we go in here and do something like this, or maybe even like this, and then do panel loops, we'll start getting that more complex shape there. So anyway, Panel loop basics, super fun. Uh, but yeah, I would. Uh, that's a good point if you if you do want a watertight mesh. And of course, when you're 3D printing, also sometimes I'll just dynamesh everything together, and that gives me a watertight mesh. I can go in and clean it up, and then project my details back, or remesh or z remesh. A lot of different ways, but it's one way. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, so um, cool, cool. Can I re-topo an OBJ mesh with Z remesher, no Z spheres, hard surface? I try everything, keep four bevels of a group split. Let me move this over here. Sorry, I can't read it. Uh, if I group split to maintain the shape of the edges don't fit, how can I maintain those? So for hard edge retopologizing, it can get a little bit tricky because you know, you'd, you'd want uh, to maintain your hard edges on complex shapes. It can get, let me see if I have something in here that we can read topo. Let me get rid of this thing. Okay, so this thing here, for example. Uh, if we wanted to Z remesh this thing, uh, first thing you'd need to be able to do is isolate each individual section with an edge here. Uh, ideally, to be a separate polygroup because again, you can go down here, you can use control curves, you can go BZ, zero measure guides, BZR, and you can kind of dial in where you want the guides to follow. Uh, but the way to kind of, if you're doing hard edge stuff, you want it pretty uh, exactly on there. And one way to do that, you can go in here to your zero mesh options and say curve strength up to 100, uh, but you can also just turn on that uh, keep groups. Now, if you are doing hard edge stuff, again, the smooth groups, I would turn that down to zero just to maintain your hard edges. Uh, but you're also going to need to divide this up. In a perfect world, um, you could go to poly groups and then group by normal and then change your angle. Let's drop that down a little bit. Drop it down a little bit. Drop it down a little bit. Yeah. It's having a hard time. Um, let's do a, a quicker example here. Let's do a cylinder here. Drag it up. Cylinder here. Make a poly mesh 3D. Let's go ahead and I'm going to drop my crease tolerance down hit crease, dynamic, apply, just to get something nice and sharp here. And again, all of this stuff is in over here. So under geometry, you can do crease by angle. And I just dropped that down to 80. You can drop it probably anywhere between 34 and 100 just for this sharp angle here, or 90, I should say. Uh, and then I hit apply on my dynamic uh, preview just to get a nice cylinder here, because I'm going to dynamesh these together anyway. Um, I can make a insert mesh out of this, or I can go to like brush, BI brush insert cylinder and grab one of these. Uh, go ahead and delete lower on that one. Just drag that out. If I want to, I can go ahead and do a split mask points, which is under your subtool split menu. And now for this one, I'll do a little bit slower. So another option you can do, so if I do a crease, drag my crease tolerance down and hit crease, it'll go ahead and crease any edges within that tolerance. And then I can hit dynamic to dynamically, oops, looks like I didn't, Increase those ones for some reason. Let's drop that down just a bit. Man, it really doesn't want to crease those. Okay, we'll go crease edge and just crease these edges here. And then we'll hit um, dynamic, which gives us a preview of our smooth mesh here. So what's going on here? Uh, and now, if this is up, I mean, I don't usually have a problem with this, but if you need to, you can also go into your 
well, we're going to be doing this in a bit too. So poly groups, uh, group by normals, and that'll go ahead and group your normals. So we've got a face down here that's grouped, a face up here that's grouped, and then these middle ones. And then you can go in here to your crease menu and do crease PG. That'll put a crease around all of your poly groups here. We'll hit D to activate that dynamic preview. If you like what you see, you can go ahead and hit apply. That'll make it into real subdivisions here. And then uh, we can move this over and uh, right, let's just try this. So we're gonna have these two hard edge things here. I'm going to merge these down. So that's gonna be under your merge menu. We can merge down. I have it, um, control E I think is merged down for me. And then we can uh, go ahead and dynamesh these together. Turn off project. I'm gonna turn off blur and then we'll just dynamesh these together. And now we've got, luckily, when we put those together, we have polygroups for each of these sections. Now we don't have a polygroup plane up here. So that's where, hopefully, we can go down here to group by normals. And that'll go ahead and group these things. Let's go ahead and crank that down just a bit. There we go. So now we have a polygroup here, polygroup here, polygroup here. Now if that didn't work, you can go in here manually and just mask off where you want to. Um, if you hold down control and you start masking, you're going to see, ah, it's not really respecting my edges here. I have a max convex, which will respect your outer edges. So if I go up here, I can just start masking with a big mask brush and it'll just go ahead and respect those edges. Then I have a mask concave, which will respect inside edges. So you can kind of go through here and grab these edges here and then switch over to mass convex and grab these outer edges here and just go ahead and manually start painting in. Um, where that is, and this is something Joseph Druss did on the Pixelogic channel, is basically hold down control, go into your um, depth here, and if you're doing a mass concave, which is respecting uh, these inside edges here, uh, you're gonna wanna bring your turn on, turn on depth mask here, and then uh, that allows you to kind of grab this outer depth and bring it down. Don't bring it down all the way to zero, but just bring it down to a very small number. Uh, same thing for max convex. You just bring the depth, depth outer depth, or I'm sorry, um, which one is it? This one? Yeah, inner depth here. Uh, not quite to zero, but just to a very small number, and that'll allow it to kind of look at your edges and kind of stop. So you can just get a very big uh, brush here and just kind of mask all these top edges. And then you can hit Control W to get your poly group. Now once you have that, since these are dynamic mesh together, you can go down here to zero mesher, um, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. You can do adaptive size. Again, if you want to build in more resolution around where your surface changes, I don't really, so I'm going to change that down to zero. And target polygon count, we're at 90,000. Let's, five is fine for now. And then we'll hit zero mesh. And then I'll go through here. And because we have keep groups on, that's going to put, in essence, a curve around this uh, that is going to follow. Now, if you wanted to really snap it to there, as, I mean, it's doing it fine. If you just, I don't know, I don't know why I'm even saying this, but you can also go over here to stroke uh, curve functions and you can use stroke uh, by poly group. So you can frame your mesh with a curve and then you could crank up your curve strength and that does the same thing, but we'll skip that. Uh, and now at this point we can just do half zero mesh and just zero mesh half. Now, if you don't like these kind of ends, which I generally don't, I'm going to isolate that. Go ahead and delete hidden, hover over this face, do close convex hole. And now we can just do our polarized cap there. And that'll usually maintain it pretty well. If you want to also, you can go in here to your edge loop and just do delete loops. And that'll get rid of any extraneous loops. Then we can also go in here to insert single edge loop, hold down alt, oops, and tap and just kind of clean that up as well. Now, again, this is on a very simple mesh. Uh, the more complex it is, you'll have varying degrees of success. Uh, and I wish you all the best with that. But that would be how I would retopologize that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you can frame by groups, but uh, by turning on keep groups, that does the same thing. Uh, Axel has a question. Hey, Mike, I have a question for you. If you model low poly mesh and external 3D program with open edges and you want to detail it in ZBrush as a way to smooth subdivide without having the open edge borders move. You could temporarily close holes and then get rid of that poly group here. So if you just want to do a quick close holes and then subdivide, 
In this case, we'd want to probably do a crease poly group. And then, um, you, so you can close holes, subdivide, uh, delete lower. We can get rid of these extraneous uh, closed holes pieces here. Do delete hidden, and you should still be able to reconstruct back. Uh, so then now you'll have subdivision history that you can sculpt on, as well as you know getting rid of the closed hole so that would be one option just to kind of keep the you know what you're saying is because like yeah if you have an open edge it's going to want to average your vertices in um so just by closing holes will allow you to have just a garbage mesh there to maintain your edge border so divide up get rid of it reconstruct and then you'll have that to kind of play with a little bit maybe just off the top of my head that makes sense to me hey everybody thanks for showing up hey yarv um so you don't, okay, so uh, yeah, you don't have to dynamesh your stuff together, but I'm just, that was just an example of, let me just scoop back here. That was an example of like how I would arrive at a mesh that would be fairly complex. And again, the more complexity, let's do a trim curve here. And what trim will do is uh, slice a hole and then add a polygroup here. So if we just go through here and trim, uh, it's gonna give us a new polygroup here and a new polygroup here. So now if we go into Z remesh, and we'll just keep our same settings that we had. Should Z remesher here, half, keep groups. Actually, we'll not do half, we'll do a target polygon kind of five-ish. That just size down to zero, keep groups. Again, smooth groups down to zero and then hit Z remesh. Uh, it's going to keep those borders for me. But the more complex it gets, it's really having to evaluate a lot because it wants to give you even topology everywhere as well as keep these groups as well as uh, maintain your shapes. So, I mean, it's doing a pretty good job on this, I'm gonna have to say. And then you can just do half and just keep knocking these things back as much as you want. And then if you wanna clean this up a little bit too, try doing that whole uh, delete loops by uh, angle and that'll kinda get rid of some of those loops as well. So pretty decent, right? Pretty good. Save you a little bit of rebuild time anyways. Um. Uh, how can I use nano mesh to fill a container with seeds? Okay, so one thing we were doing in class that was kind of interesting is uh, filling, uh, what, what were we doing? We were doing space junk. So we'll start with that here. And it's kind of the same principle here. So if I have a sphere here and I make it a poly mesh 3D, and you know what, let's just zero mesh this thing. So I'm gonna zero mesh it same, adapt size down to zero. And Okay, and you know, let's do half. I'm just gonna kind of simplify this down. And really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how complex this thing is because I'm gonna be just scattering random points on here anyway. But if we go to QMAS, go to ins insert uh, nano mesh here, a single poly. And if you have any junk that you wanna kind of, uh, if, if, if so I did a, a nano mesh, a nano tile on my YouTube channel here just recently. Let me go ahead and pop that up. If you go to my playlist here, you can check that out. It's just using Joseph Drust's uh, nano tile plugin. Um, but it, it essentially, you, you can just go in here and hit M and then you can grab any sort of space junk. Let's say uh, this is some space junk, so we can just tile that on there and get, we'll just do uh, all, all polygons here. And then we can go through here and go to our nano mesh. And I'm just gonna crank up pretty much all of these variances here just to kind of give it a lot of different looks for all these different types of things. And then we can go in here and do um, like a random distribution scattering here. Now if I want to add to this, I can hit M, uh, grab another piece of space junk here. Let's just make it, I just want to keep it simple. So I'm going to do a, let's do a, a star. Uh, if I just start dragging out, it's going to replace. If I start dragging out, hold down shift, it'll add an index here so I can switch between these. And now I can do the same thing here. We'll do crank up our variances. So it's doing random rotation and length and width and height. And let's go ahead and actually forgot to do this too for the other one. I'm going to go ahead and start making different objects here. Let's go ahead and crank that size down a bit and then we'll do random distribution. And then we'll go back to index zero and we'll go ahead and change a lot of these here. And then we'll make that size just a bit smaller here. 
So we're gonna have random stuff floating out into space. And also, see offset, I'm also gonna crank up. Actually, all the offsets, let's crank up. I'm gonna go back to index one, offset, offset, offset. So now you've got a lot of stuff scattered in space. And this is like if you had a space explosion. And um, so if we like that, let's go ahead and do uh, inventory uh, one to mesh, one to mesh. And then we can control shift drag, uh, control shift click, control shift drag, and then just do a delete hidden. Then you can put a spaceship in here in the middle of all the space junk. And then you can go through and render this thing. And you've got all this floating stuff. You can get a height map stuff. Now, obviously, this is horrible space junk, and it's a little bit in intense. Um, but that's kind of a way how you can fill out an area with stuff uh, using nano mesh. Now, if you wanted to fill up a cylinder, um, I'm trying to remember. That might be something I need to research to do it convincingly. I remember at the way back when, when this the nano mesh was first introduced, it was. Um, Let's see if this has it here. ZBrush. I remember seeing one that was like uh, coffee beans or something. Oh, I don't know. I guess we, you know what? Let's just let's just try it. Let's give it a shot. Um, so if we have, it should have the same same kind of deal. So if we have a container here, a cylinder 3D, for example. And we go and we make it a poly mesh 3D. And I'm gonna turn on perspective real quick. I'm gonna grab this top piece here, invert it, and go ahead and delete hidden. And now if I do a display properties flip, now I can kind of see the inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, insert nano mesh. We'll fill this thing full of spheres. So I'm gonna all polygons here. I'm gonna hit M, grab a sphere, drag that out. And now if I go in here to our do, do, do. And again, if you don't want that, uh, let's go ahead and play it safe so we can kind of have a little bit more freedom. We're going to do, instead of all polygons, we're going to do polygroup all. So if at any point I want to change my mind and go, you know what, I don't want these top two to have them. I'm going to isolate those, hit control W, it'll give it a new polygroup. And now it's only going to affect the polygroup I dragged it on, which is nice. So then we'll go into our nano mesh here. Where are we at? Not that one. And if you, you can hold down shift and open multiple menus, you can also um, just close some menus you don't want to go back into again. There we go, nano mesh. So now they're all being distributed. If I do a X, Y, and Z offset, I'm hoping they keep them within the container. So X offset, we probably don't want to touch. Y offset, nah, let's do Z offset. There we go. So if we crank up Z offset and then do Z variance, we can kind of just start scattering these things within the uh, interior space here. And then, okay, you know, you can you can do random distribution, start filling it up. You can fill it. Oh, you can fill it up with more objects, different types of objects here, and it's still staying within that that original shape here. Um, you can add all the variances you want. Um, you know, what, let's go ahead and just do. We'll do a lucky charms thing. We're gonna hit M. We'll do a cone. Drag that out. Hold down Shift to add an index, and then on this index here again, we'll do. Z offset all the way up and then Z variance and then we'll crank that random distribution up and then we'll, we'll crank that size up just a bit too as well. So we're just filling it up with different objects here. Um, and once you have that, we can do one to mesh, one to mesh, hold down control shift. I'm gonna do control shift A to grab all that. We'll go ahead and split this one off. And I'm also going to flip this and now we'll go ahead and do a Q mesh, all polygons. And now we'll do a, a crease tolerance here, dynamic turned on. And now we've got kind of a container full of stuff that you can do, maybe. Off the top of my head, that's how I would do it, I suppose. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a coffee pot that had coffee beans in it. Um, I can't find it anymore, but I think actually he was using um, something else. Something in the back of my something's tickling the back of my head, um, but yeah, I hope that made sense. And that might be not be the best way to do it, but again, just off the top of my head, filling up a space. I guess that's how I do it. You can also do maybe a small. Nah, eh, you'd have to change. You can also play with a Z offset if you wanted to put a dummy object in the middle of this thing and then scatter around it. 
you could do that. But yeah, you can fill this thing up with nails and nuts and bolts or whatever. Uh, question, are you using ZBrush Photoshop workflow? Uh, it's been a while. I used to use that when I was doing very specific poly painting. Um, but it, you know what? It has been a while since I've hopped into Photoshop. Uh, but totally, totally doable. You can do that through GoZ. You can also do it through ZapLink. Um, I think you can do, yeah, you can do it through GoZ, but also underneath documents here, we used to do a lot of ZapLink, sending things, you know, character sheets over and all that kind of stuff here. Let's go ahead and delete these here for what it's worth. Uh, so we got our character here. We've got our padding here. I can hit D to kind of dynamically subdivide that. And then we can just kind of go through and start uh, paneling this up and kind of getting rid of our original mesh there. Um, is there a difference between a uh, difference in the paint brushes and setting up RGB on the standard brush? Um, I don't think so. I think at the end of the day, you are just basically putting poly paint information on there. So yeah, if I change a uh, standard brush to RGB and you can change your focal shift. In fact, if I'm going to be doing a lot of that, what I'll tend to do is standard brush clone just so I have it, its own little brush here. I can change the settings and I'll have to go back to the standard brush when I want to sculpt. RGB up to 100. We'll change the focal shift down to um, negative 100 just to tighten up that um, in there. I forgot we already poly painted on this thing. So if we change our color here, then we can just kind of poly paint, uh, change the vertex here. Uh, but yeah, if I change to the clay brush here and turn off the add, um, it will have a it will have a slightly different effect. I think it does. You know, in fact, uh, if you go into H polish, for example, and do RGB, you can do really kind of cool effects. See how it kind of respects um, some edges here, so you can kind of use that to kind of poly paint along an edge just like that masking, that mask depth we were doing here. Um, let me see. You can see how the depth is changed on your H polish brush. So it is kind of inheriting a little bit of those properties. So you can definitely use um, the different brushes to different effect here. Uh, but at the end of the day, they are doing the exact same thing, which is poly painting, unless you do go down here to your, oh, where is that stuff at? Texture. And alpha and texture or the poly paint mode and so by default standard but you can also turn on colorize multiply lighten and darken and you can switch between those so that'll be a little bit different than just painting it on um, but for the most part yeah it's just applying a vertex color and then the different brushes do behave a little bit differently but the end result is the same as far as um cool cool um Oh, about, uh, what has changed my mind about going from ZBrush to Poly uh, to Photoshop? Um, I don't do any of my texturing in Photoshop anymore. I, it's been a long time since I've used Photoshop. In fact, if I have to step into Photoshop to do texturing, I'm probably doing something wrong. Uh, I do, well, you know, if I'm going to be doing really high resolution stuff, I'll just do it in Mari. If I'm doing uh, game stuff, and it's kind of been my, my uh, go-to for even high resolution stuff at this point. Um, is just using Substance Painter and or just poly painting straight into ZBrush, either poly painting straight on there or loading something up, for example, in to, uh, if we go to texture, you can load, you can import any texture you want if you want to bring in like faces and paint them on. Yeah, I do that in ZBrush a lot. Well, not a lot anymore, but I used to. You can all just bring in a texture into, uh, oops, let's grab that, throw that in the spotlight here. You can also load up textures in here and paint with a texture across your surface or drag wrecked it. A lot of different ways to apply. Um, we got a standard brush. Let's go to our clay brush, which you have RGB turned on. You can go through here and kind of start painting on through spotlight here. You can load up a texture here. Now you change this to like drag wrecked. You can drag wrecked out a texture. Like so. So. Uh, but yeah, as far as like hopping back into Photoshop, if I had to do something very, very specific, I can't think off the top of my head what that might be. But yeah, I mean, in Photoshop, the Photoshop zap link thing basically holds your uh, view. You go in and paint on it. It might even be cooler now that they have 3D capability, but 
haven't done a lot of that recently. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and by Mario over Substance, it's, you know, I do both of them. By high res, I just mean, like, uh, painting across UDIMs and doing, like, 32K texture type stuff, which I don't really do. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend like that happens a lot in my life. And the other times it has happened is if I'm just kind of playing around and kind of just playing with the tools. Um, but, you know, mo in fact, most of my high-res painting has been done in ZBrush. Uh, just taking faces and then just transferring through spotlight, um, you know, specific camera, uh, you know, photos that have been taken that have gotten rid of the spec and evened out the tones and had good lighting so I could just paint the texture information onto a high-res mesh and then just transfer that off. Um, so it's been a while since I've done anything outside of uh, Substance or ZBrush. Cool. Alright, so where did I end up? Let's grab here, we got this thing, we got these two. So if I look at these two, you're going to see my original mesh my sculpted mesh is this one here, and that just kind of uh, dictates where I wanted my ridges to go and kind of where I want it to be built up around the center line here. And then I've got my new one here with my new panel loops, or my new panels built out. So if I go in here, go into our options, let's go to geometry, edge loop, we'll go into panel loops here. So our thickness, uh, you know what, if I want this to inherit other panel loops, for example, like this one has some uh, panel loop options. If I want to just keep doing the same type of panel loop options, what I can do possibly, let's try this. I'm going to do group all of these things together. So I'm going to shoot this one to the top. I'm going to alt tap the skin Z sphere, hold on shift, do the bent up arrow angle up arrow. So I'm going to just go through all these skin Z spheres that I have appended and I'm going to shoot them to the top. Here, here, here. Okay, that's all of them. So now if I go through here and just isolate those, I can make sure that's our entire suit. Looks good. If I want to, I can go ahead and just do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Um, and now I'm going to grab this one. I want to keep these settings. I'm going to shoot it to the top. I'm not positive this is going to work, but let's try it. I'm going to merge these all down. And now if I go ahead and do and it kept my poly groups right because that's very important. Looks like it did. So now I can go through here. If I do a group split, I can do a screw, uh, split to similar parts here, or I can just go ahead and grab, do control, I can just grab a little piece, do control shift A, and then go ahead and split hidden here. And it looks like on that one, uh, that, so when I, so a lot of times, oh, that, that's interesting, um, It's it flipped half of it. And sometimes what'll happen is you'll be, um, you'll be zero meshing, or what is it? Uh, Z-sphere retopologizing. And it'll have double turned on and everything will look fine. But then you'll go in here and let's do a quick save here. And I'll go ahead and go into my quick saves and we'll just load up this last quick save here. There we go. Um, so what can sometimes happen is you'll be working right along. It's like, okay, everything looks good. I appended my adaptive skin. And then you go over here to inflate and you'll do inflate. And it's like, oh, it's inflating half of my object, not the other half. Whenever it does anything weird, make sure you go down here to your display properties here and turn off double and you'll see, oh, half of it's flipped. Now at this point, you could just isolate uh, half of your mesh. You can just grab a little piece of it. Uh, turn off X, grab a little piece of this one, control shift A and then flip this side and now you're good to go. Uh, or you can delete half, mirror, mirror, and weld, all that good stuff. Um, cool, everybody good? Yes, and if ZBrush confuses the hell out of you, go to my YouTube channel, check out Intro to ZBrush Part 1. It should be, it's a pretty linear process uh, to kind of step through, but also the PixLogic uh, YouTube channel as well as the PixLogic Z Classroom on their website will walk you through kind of the basics. And you know, anything I'm doing here isn't certainly isn't rocket science. It's all nothing. Now there's nothing hardcore about it. 
Um, and basically, you know, when you're talking about polygroups here, these are just visual representations of a selection set, for example, in Maya. Uh, super, a lot more powerful, uh, uh, much easier to kind of view and dictate what you want to do with this type of um, object here. So now let's see. So when I merge those down and then split them apart, they should have inherited those um, properties here. So if I grab this one here and we go to geometry, Again, we're going to do panel loops. Uh, it inherited those thickness, so now if I do panel loops, uh, they should all be uniform at least. So in this case, um, you know, I've got those here. I can hit D. It's going to do the smoothed out thing uh, to do our dynamic preview. Let's go ahead and do. We want to get that back piece, so I'm going to go ahead and do an uh, extrude all polygons here. Now, if we pull these forward, we won't have that flipping problem. But if we push them back, we are going to have to go and do deformation or the um, display properties flip. There we go. And now, if I do a panel loops on this one here, that'll go ahead and give us the panel loops where we want them. We can hit D, and now we've got our back pieces here. Um, on this one in particular, what I did, I think. I can go through here. I can do a crease by poly group. Crease PG. There it is. And that's just under your crease menu. And you can kind of crease through and it'll kind of crease those edges a little bit. You can also go through here and change your crease tolerance. That one was set at like 52 or 60. You can just keep cranking that down. And that'll go through and kind of start creasing some of your corners. And just because we're at this point doesn't mean you have to leave it. It's still sculptable. It's just geometry. I'm just doing a dynamic preview here. So if you did want to... Um, you can go in here to your deformation inflate and you can inflate your geometry or you can just manually go through and like use your standard brush and start sculpting this out or just going through and inflating any areas you want to. Now when I do eventually subdivide this thing up I will be going through and sculpting a little bit of detail just to kind of make it pop uh, a little bit here but for now I think that'll work. Let's go back through here. Um, and you can also, you know, I inherited these properties here, but if I did want to, I can go through here and change the thickness from like 0 0.003 to 0 0.0045 maybe. Panel loops and just kind of get those a little bit more robust, a little bit thicker, or whatever you want to do. Should be good, but at least we'll have the tech suit going. Um, Cool. Thanks. So uh, hopefully those videos helped out. And like I said, um, even just through this playlist, you can start with uh, Intro to Zebras Part One. But there's also some easy tutorials to kind of step through that might catch your eye, um, just to kind of go through the process. Um, <laughs> uh, how did you make the topology run in those directions? Did you use guides? I yeah, so as far as this stuff, all I had was, oh, you know what? I should probably talk about that, right? Let's, so if I wanted to do, say, this neck over here, we can do the one thing we did, which was for the throat, which is going through and slicing and mirroring and stuff like that. Uh, let's just turn everything back on here. And we will grab this piece here. I'm going to shoot this to the top and then isolate this out. So uh, this is what I had originally. Now, I basically went through, for this one, I went to insert Z-sphere, and then I grabbed my Z-sphere here, and I hit X, and then E, which is scale, and then I scaled it way down, hit W and moved it up, kind of inside and out of the way, scale it down even more here. Now it's kind of out of the way here. I uh, also went to like a medium gray, changed this to one of my favorites, which is somewhere in here is Matt Cat Pearl Cavity. Um, and then a medium gray color. Obviously, you're going to want to turn colorize off. And you can you can retopologize multiple subtools at once if you want. Whatever is visible on your screen, it'll want to retopologize. Uh, but for this instance, I'm just doing this one here. And then it's just a matter of going down here and just doing a manual retopology. So it'd be like um, for people who haven't done that yet, we can go into edit topology here, um, and then go into draw mode. You can do move scale and rotate, but you can just go through here and just start building in your topology like so. Now, like with when we were doing Z remesher, and then we just go back and forth here. And if we want to put a line down the middle, we can. And then you can hit W, and you can move these things around. And we're just basically drawing our topology out. Uh, then once we have the topology drawn out, make an adaptive skin, go through and do the poly grouping like we were doing earlier, and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, we're just continue this one down. I'm not going to do the whole thing, obviously, because it's really not super exciting, but. 
at least get get you um, if anybody who hasn't done manual retopology this might be interesting to you and of course you can also use the topology brush and as your as your mesh changes this is why zero mesh is so nice because you know you got to kind of figure out like okay as my mesh changes do I want to put a you know this is this line is longer than this line so I want to put more um, fidelity over here so you got to kind of maybe make a decision to be like okay I'm gonna start splitting this one off and now I got a triangle which isn't a huge deal but you can try and terminate that triangle like down here maybe if you want to which again for a high res isn't that important you just want to make sure it smooths correctly and now you can just continue on and up and over uh, then you can hit a which will give you your um, adaptive skin right now our adaptive skin is a density of two we'll change that to one so there's just our polygons drying out we'll hit make adaptive skin we'll go ahead and like insert that skin z-sphere so now I have my original this one I got my z-sphere here I'm gonna go down twice we can turn these ones off and then we can turn on our other one and we can re topologize that uh, if I want to I can just go in here to my I can go out of adaptive skin mode hit delete topology and I can just keep the same z-sphere and just to start re topologizing my next thing so I can just kind of recycle that Z sphere with new topology and just really quickly go through and just kind of build that out. Uh, and then when I'm done, let's go ahead. I don't need the Z sphere anymore. Delete it. And then I've got this. And then it was just a matter of like we did earlier, just alt dragging, polygrouping all this stuff and then getting it ready for panel loops. Cool. Uh, is there a way to make a custom um, retopology brush. Um, you can modify the existing retopology brush. You can go um, BTO, that's topology brush, and then yeah, you can go through here and just kind of drag. And for something like this, it might even be more worthwhile because you can just kind of drag through here. And then as you drag across here, it'll just start making topology for you, like so. And then there we go. And then if you actually want that geometry, if you want to clean this up, you can alt drag and that'll kind of clean it up and then you can continue off these lines. The downside, it's not a downside, um, the upside to this is you can make topology changes really quickly. The downside is it will only stick to the surface. So Z spheres, you can kind of, you know, you can bridge between, you know, you can bridge this to here and across. Uh, topology you have to be right here. Um, another downside, and this is just a me downside, is I can I, I will get caught up in the details too much with this brush and um, I'll get kind of lost. Uh, but for simpler stuff, I'm not too bad. And then we just continue these down and around here. But yeah, it's like, okay, I'm going to terminate this one, I guess, and then go through here. And then I have to do a lot of cleanup and um, all that good stuff. And you're going to alt drag across here and then kind of clean these things up. So I usually end up getting pretty messy. So whenever I get more complex than just something like a strap, if I'm just doing this, then yeah, topology brush is great. And then you just tap off here and that'll give you thickness. Let's do shifty. So now we've got um, our topology with thickness. If you didn't want thickness, just drag, drop your draw size down to one and then tap and that'll just give you your polygons here. Then we can just do a split mast points. And now you've got these things that you can now go in and do like Q mesh polygroup all and give it thickness however you want or go through here and do your panel um, groups and stuff like that um, but yeah as far as like customizing that brush it's mostly just curves so all your curve options are going to be under your stroke not all of them but a lot of them are going to be under curve curve functions curve modifiers so you can modify these options to kind of get um, what you want like so um, but yeah, anything in ZBrush that has options, you can usually customize pretty pretty well. I haven't looked too heavily into um, customizing the topology stuff in particular. I guess we don't need that anymore. Where do we leave off? This thing? Oh yeah, this thing we don't need up here. So yeah, here, on, 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 on. Go back to matcap gray, turn this up. And uh, I guess we can just go through here and just panel loops of stuff. Let's go ahead and give these things back faces too, like we were doing. So Q mesh, polygroup all, not polygroup all. Let's do an extrude all polygons. And then we'll do a flip. And then we'll do a panel loops. Voila. 
Got that going. And we'll also do a crease. And I'll go through here and clean this up as needed as we go. Um, if I request you to make me body armor or sword or a shield, you ever request like that? Um, we do, I do go into that a little bit. If you go into, for example, on Twitch TV, on my Twitch channel, um, and also on the Pixelogic channel, I should probably throw that up here on this channel, the Pebblech Workshop. If you go back through, we do a little bit of that kind of stuff. Um, you can request it. There's no guarantee I'll get around to it. But for example, in mine, uh, we did a sword that we kind of, I kind of went through a little bit. Um, if I don't have anything in particular, what I'm trying to do now is just put this uh, sci-fi chick to bed. I've been not working on her for weeks in a row. Um, but yeah, I mean, eventually, oh man, I've got a backlog too of, you know, people want to do, um, what was the last one? It was like a fantasy anime character. Or sometimes it might be useful to, for me just to get in here and do uh, just anything just to kind of bring in some reference and just kind of go through and just do a mad speed sculpt and just kind of see what I can get done in a couple hours. You'd be surprised we can get done in a couple hours. Um, and ZBrush especially. But uh, yeah, request it. I'll add it to my list. And then uh, if I get around to it, I will certainly... Uh, it'll, it'll be posted either on this channel or my channel, depending on which one I get it to, get to it in. Um, there we go, panel loops, there we go. All right, so now uh, we got this thing all tech suited out, like so. So now at this point, I don't probably don't need her tech suit anymore. I can go through here and fill these gaps as well. Um, you know, I just kind of go through here and move. These are just dynamic preview, so I can just turn off that preview and I get my regular polygons back. But it is kind of nice to see, you know, how far I'm going to have to kind of push and pull these things after I've smoothed them, for example. And I can still go in here and Z modeler and stuff. And there are some gaps I'm not going to be able to fill, but those should be filled by armor later on anyways, or big plastic inserts, that kind of thing. So you can kind of go through here and kind of modify this stuff. So. Now I've got her like this, uh, and this is actually kind of heavy, so I'm just going to do Shift D because it is having to draw those polygons here. Just for performance reasons, I'm going to go ahead and do Shift D on here, and let's go ahead and everything looks fine to me. So I'm going to go through here and just get rid of the original sculpt, which we don't really need anymore. So we'll just like delete that. Let's go into solo mode here. We can delete that. Do a little bit of scene cleanup here, and I'm going to save iteratively. In case I need these back, I'll always have my original sculpt to go back to. So not a big deal. So now I can turn all of these back on. Now we got a brand new tech suit built out. And now I can start, uh, you know, retopologizing these outer pieces here and just start layering in that detail here. Yes, like that. <laughs> um, yeah, there are some days where I'll work a lot on something and I'll just get very, very little done, especially if I'm in concept land, but occasionally, yeah, in production work where it's just like, oh man, I, I worked on that all day long and what did I really get done? That certainly happens. Um, it'd be cool to see some environment props at some point. And that's, you know, for me, and even when I'm evaluating... Uh, portfolios and stuff there is almost no difference between me modeling this thing here or any of this armor and me modeling a cryo chamber or me modeling anything really um, the only thing that gets a little bit weird is like modular sets can sometimes be its own kind of thing or if you get into environment production work like atlasing textures and you know, reuse and uh, it, it gets a little bit on the production side, not necessarily like just doing high res environment stuff. That's, that's like a prop that's like goes into a zero to one UV space and just is it's kind of its own thing or a hero prop. Those are just as straightforward as making any number of character assets. Now even character stuff can sometimes get not straightforward. If you start breaking it down into, you know, different tiling materials in a layered 
material in Unreal, for example, and just using masks in between, I can sometimes get a little bit hairy. Whenever you start getting into performance and getting things that have to be able to look super high fidelity, but actually not be very high fidelity, but it kind of tricks the brain using a bunch of um, fidelity tricks, which environments has to use a lot because it's massive amounts of space um, that have to be, that trick you into thinking they're really high fidelity when in reality they're just a plane with a few tiling materials on it or tiling textures uh, or vert color, or, you know, baked in lighting, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll definitely, we can definitely do some of that. And in fact, we can do some uh, weapon stuff for her, which is like an easy prop, which some companies consider environment props. We, a certain affinity, I think it's more of a, it's like a sandbox, uh, vehicles, weapons, characters are kind of in their own thing. Um, cool. Um, yeah. All right. So we got this here. Uh, what do we want to do next? Again, let's go ahead and get rid of some of this armor. This armor uh, will go inside of the mech suit. So as she's just standing here, um, she looks a little bit off balance, honestly. I might flesh out a little bit more of this because without her mech suit on, she looks a little top heavy. Now she is a space space person, so it's maybe not a huge deal. You know, but I might make a pair of like custom boots if she's just going to be kind of hanging out just to give her a little bit more weight down and up front and you know I can also her pose I can bring her legs back a little bit make her a little bit more balanced just to kind of offset this uh, heaviness here but I am gonna I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave these alone because it fits within the mech suit as it is there's little things to think about um, and of course the helmet has all been merged into one sub tool here we can we'll go through and do that in a bit but let's keep layering this this lovely lady up so I'm just gonna go through here and hide these armor bits here and there's her little spine so we're kind of at this point here although I think we're one layer back so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take all of these armor bits and I'm gonna hold down I'm alt tapping I'm holding down shift and doing the bent up arrow and I'm just shooting them to the top I can merge them down and we'll take this one too and when I'm merging them, it's just temporary. I can always split them back off. It's not a huge deal. It just allows me to kind of select all those things uh, quickly. Here's an armor piece here. And I guess that's an armor piece as well. And this kneecap. All of this stuff is armor. So I'm just doing a little bit of scene organization here. Um, now her boots, I think, are another separate piece. So we'll do that later as well. So we'll get rid of those. Here we go. So she's got a little pair of socks, socks on, a little techie stuff. And now all this stuff is going to be uh, another layer on top of her already pre-existing tech suit. And it's got some dividing lines in here, so I can use these. If I want to, I can poly paint uh, over this, but I kind of generally like to keep things, you know, again, just that medium gray here. So I'm just going to use these lines as my guides. If I turn everything back on... Okay, I guess that does follow the shoulder pad here. I'm just trying to see. I'm going to smooth this out so I don't get confused here. And anywhere where I, oops, I've just got my clay brush here. I'll do Ziad. Kind of fill in these spots a little bit. Let's go back to drag dots here. There we go. And also, if I don't want to get confused here, let's go ahead and shoot this to the top. And do we even have, I guess, our, our suit here? We'll shoot to the top here. Because what I did with this one is I basically, um, when I was sculpting on it, I had her as a dynamesh. I deflated it, and then I just brushed through, which leaves me, if I go into solo mode here, you're going to see, okay, this area needs to be its own thing, but this area that's pushed back doesn't. Uh, so that can kind of get a little bit confusing here. So I'm going to have her tech suit underneath so we can kind of dictate where we want this thing to go. And I'm just going to pop this thing off. I don't need her, the rest of her mesh either. I'm going to go through here and just kind of brush in. And you know what? We're still on max convex. Let's go back to just our regular, not mask curve pin, our regular mask pin here. There we go. 
It's like it's doing a really weird thing, and that would be why. So now again, these you know the tech suit is very busy, uh, and now if you cover the, a lot of that up with armor, it's not a huge deal. But if again, if I want to do a tech suit render, I want to make sure it's not overly busy, and you know, leave let our eye breathe a little bit. So we can go in here and add another layer to that tech suit, just to kind of put in some broad areas that kind of follow her body and um, just add another layer just to kind of break it up a little bit so using material breakup and shape breakup and form breakup to our advantage here this goes down and let's go ahead and bring back I guess I can merge all the tech suit stuff down too let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna hold down shift and pop these to the top and we can just temporarily uh, put those all in the same one so E E E or that's my hotkey for that. Now I got most of our tech suit here. And then we'll turn that on. So now I get to see a little bit better where I want uh, these pieces here. <clears throat> and again, the only reason I'm putting these on is again to let the eye kind of breathe a little bit and allow us to put in also another material. So it'll be another material breakup opportunity, a color breakup opportunity, and also a shape breakup opportunity. And then on top of here is also gonna be some armor pieces. And most of this, it was again, it was pretty loose. It was just doing some really blobby brushes, like clay brush and clay buildup, and then standard brush and Damien standard brush. If you go back through the, Logic streaming YouTube channel for mine. You, you can see the entire making of her up to this point. And again, I kind of let her lapse for a while. We just went through a lot of days and, and I just basically answered questions, which is fine. I don't have a problem doing that, obviously. But if I want to make some forward headway, I got to keep, keep on keeping on. Now, if I, if, and the reason, again, I kept it loose, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, I um, guess I can just take this piece here. Uh, the reason I kept it loose is so as I was going through, if I wanted to make a change, because if I build it in, if I'm like, okay, I know exactly where this suit's going to go, so I'm going to retopologize it or use topology brush or extract it off, and then I want to make changes to it. Um, if I'm just sculpting up and through, it's just a simple matter of holding down shift and just smoothing it out or using, um, holding down alt on my brush. And um, what's going on here? It's kind of sloppy. Uh, I'll just carry this through. But if it's nothing there because I've extracted it, then I've got to go and add to it and all that good stuff. So it takes me a little bit more cleanup work time than if I had just done it, but at the end of the day, you know, getting my idea out quickly was more important than getting something clean out. I can always clean it up later, like I'm doing now. And these arms kind of twine through here. And the reason I, you know, God, we went, we started, at first I was going to do the tech suit and just be like, oh, we'll do a tech suit first and get that all finished up. And then we're going to go back through and do a little bit of armor and finish that up. And then we'll go back through and do a mech suit and we'll finish that up. Um, but I went through and did all the way through to the mech suit first, just to see if there was any opportunity for interesting things to happen between the tech suit and the armor. So like, it looks like it's somewhat being the design is being dictated by the eventual mech suit which goes on top and some of that did come into play on her backpack so her backpack when it plugs into the mech suit and her chest piece when it plugs into the mech suit and the underlying armor actually is used to protect like her or support weight from the armor uh, other levels of armor i put a lot more care into those areas there we go so we've got all these pieces kind of masked out here. These are good. And then we'll go ahead and grab all of the arm. And this, this tech suit, this overlying tech suit has our glove built in. So that'll be kind of a fun thing to kind of go through and 
Oops, let's do mask lasso. And then we'll switch back to mask pin. And it looks like I grabbed a little too much. There we go. Everybody bored yet? Uh, hey, Thunder Bunny, thanks for showing up. Z Game Tools, thanks for showing up. And I think we're kind of starting to wrap up here. We got about 20 minutes left. We're just, we went through and we did <coughs> kind of that, <coughs> excuse me, that ribbed tech suit thing. And now we're just going through and I'm grabbing the pieces from our original sculpt that we're going to go through and make nice and pretty and refine. Now, while I'm breaking this up, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna start doing retopologizing stuff just yet. Uh, because I do want to, I do tend to kind of want to pop things off and see if they need to be refined first. It's just it gives me an opportunity to kind of make sure that my shapes are clean that I am popping off here before I make that executive decision to abandon my concept sculpt. Which I'm slowly doing as we work our way through. I'm slowly getting rid of our sculpts, our original kind of just blobby concept sculpt meshes, and replacing them with refined meshes. And again, those don't have to be final. They just had to be uh, more final than a 10 second sculpt that we've used in the past here, just to kind of get our ideas out. And I think this will work. I think it's clean enough here. It looks like this should be part of the shoe. And again, I've been messing with this thing so much and paying so little attention as I've moved through. Um, you know, it's a lot different to work on something like for a week straight. Uh, if you look at the commander that I did for Substance Days, that the guy with the gun arm, that took about 35, 40 hours, but that was me uh, kind of piecemealing it too. But it's a lot different to sit on, sit down and work on something straight for hours as opposed to the live stream thing where it's like, I'll work on something for 30 minutes and then I'll do something else and then I'll work on it for another 30 minutes here and then we'll do something else. All right, good enough. So we'll do a control W, that'll mask, uh, that'll just make it a poly group where we had things masked. Go ahead and isolate that out. We'll do a delete hidden. And now if I bring our tech suit back, we've got these overlying parts here and now I can go through. Um, I don't wanna necessarily do any sort of extraction or closing holes because again this is a very thin mesh here but I may want to kind of divide this thing up here that might be easy enough to do so if I go through here and we'll turn off double go ahead and mask these pieces out here and again it doesn't have to be beautiful Control W isolate that and then delete hidden now that's its own single piece here. So if I wanted to, I should be able to do control shift, control shift A, and that's the bottom pieces here. Now I can start dividing this thing up. So we'll go ahead and do a split hidden. Got this piece here. And this looks like it's all one piece except for the arms. Now on this one, oh, because there's no verts putting these things together, if I do an auto groups, it should go through and evaluate this and say, okay, this one's separate and this one's separate and this one's separate. I'm gonna do a quick uh, mirror and weld to get those poly groups on the same side and then I can isolate this. So you can do a group split and I'll just do a split hidden here. Like so. So now we got those things, I'm gonna do a quick save. Uh, half key for that. If you roll over these, anything in ZBrush, you'll see there's a little help menu and that says the quick save is nine. And if you hold down control, sometimes it'll give you even more information. So it's kind of a built-in uh, help menu. And now I can hit the comma key, go to my quick saves, and just reload that last quick save. I like to do that when I'm splitting a lot of stuff off. Cool. Okay. Um, what's next? So we've got this thing here. Turn off polyframe. Anything standing out to me? So this stuff does need to be pulled over this area here. So I'm just going to go through here with my clay brush and just kind of start pulling this up a bit. And again, there's no back side to this, so I don't need to worry about like turning on back face masking or anything. Uh, in fact, if I go uh, B, Z, P, it's a Z project brush, I'm gonna turn off RGB, and I guess we can crank that up to 100. Um, you wanna be really careful if this thing has uh, X symmetry turned on, it's gonna wanna pull through. It's just camera based, so it can kinda tend to pull across uh, if you're not careful. Uh, so what I usually tend to do is turn off X, 
and then we'll just do a mirror and weld later. Uh, so what we can do with this thing is we can like Z project our one mesh to another that's underneath it. Like so. So now if I go into solo mode, you're going to see it's just kind of projecting that mesh on there. Uh, that just gives you a little bit, kind of follows that form a little bit more. And then you can do like an inflate or you can do a mask and inflate. And let's go ahead and do a smooth, stronger. And then we can go through here with our inflate brush. That'll just kind of get me my form a little bit faster than me having to sculpt. And we'll go into H polish here and we'll hold down Alt. Uh, oops, we have RGB turn off for H polish still. Holding down Alt with H polish and then letting go of Alt and just kind of going back and forth and just kind of, and then going back with smooth a little bit. There we go. And now it's already close to that underlying shape. We can just use move to kind of move that out a bit. And again, just holding down H polish and holding down Alt kind of dictate. So now we have a tech suit that's now dictated um, the outside of this part. And if we turn everything back on, you're gonna see even on top of this is gonna be another piece that gets attached. And then on top of that, it's gonna be a mech suit that goes on top of all those pieces. So we can, oh, and another thing I forgot. So let's, let's, I turned off X. Let's go ahead and just go back to our text here. So I projected that. Now this side is still kind of lumpy. So what I'm gonna do is do a quick uh, deformations mirror to put that on this side and then I'll do a quick mirror and weld. The reason I do that is because mirror and weld goes from, if I turn on the floor here, it goes from the negative X quadrant to the positive X. So whatever you do over here is gonna be mirrored over on this side. So if you're ever working over here and you wanna put that over here, you just do a quick mirror, which is under deformations mirror here. And then you wanna do a geometry modify topology mirror and weld. And that's why I did a custom menu. So they're right here next to each other. Um, I get that question a lot too. If you go um, to the Pixelogic D classroom, of course, and I also have a few that'll walk you through. In fact, Intro to ZBrush Part 2 is where we start doing the custom menu stuff. So if you want to make your own custom menu, custom hotkeys, that'll walk you through it if you're interested in that kind of thing. Really speed up your workflow, make so you don't go blind just scrolling up and down in this part here. Uh, okay, question. Um, uh, I really like the smooth, stronger brush, but it's really annoying to have to go into Lightbox and getting it every time. Is there a way to save it to that quick brush menu? Yeah, so I have it saved. If I hit B, smooth, stronger is sitting right here when I load up ZBrush. Um, all it is is, well, first of all, anybody watching, if you wanna just do smooth, stronger, if you just have the regular old smooth brush here, uh, I don't even know where it is, S smooth. Um, all that is, if you hold down shift, you'll get smooth and that'll kind of smooth through here, let's go ahead and turn on X here. Uh, you have your Z intensity up 100. You can hold down shift and then crank that down and it was like barely smooth. Crank it up, it'll smooth a lot. Um, where that's coming in is under smooth brush modifiers. You're gonna see there's a weighted smooth mode and there is ways to smooth so it respects your edges. There's ways this will respect your groups. Uh, the number, so zero is just standard smooth. One is smooth stronger. Um, so if you just take your smooth brush and change your weighted um, smooth mode to one, it'll automatically just go through here and do a smooth stronger. Um, however, you can also hit the comma key, go to your brush menu and go to your smooth. And there's a smooth stronger in here, which again is just basically turning on smooth stronger. Um, in order to have that, if you just, you know, go to your light, well, easiest way I think is just go to brush, double click smooth stronger. That'll uh, load up your smooth stronger brush then select that. Um, so that you've got your smooth stronger brush. Now hold down shift because without shift held down, you're just going to be saving your standard brush. So hold down shift, go to brush, save as, go to your ZBrush 4R7. So there's a C and on Windows C program files, x86, picture logic, ZBrush 4R7. If you go into Z startup, brush presets, you're going to see I have um, smooth stronger in there. So now anything you put into your brush presets folder will be loaded up every time you start ZBrush. Um, for another example, I have move Accu on there and all that is, we've gone over this before, is in your move brush, you're gonna have a curve menu here, see that Accu curve? So with a regular move brush, it just does like a soft fall off here. If you turn on Accu curve, it'll pull out to a point and you can kind of use that to kind of pull out uh, to corners and stuff or hard edge stuff. Um, 
So what I have is I have W, or Alt W assigned to move. I have Alt V assigned to AccuCurve move. So I can just really quickly, you know, make, I made an AccuCurve brush. I saved it in that folder. Uh, it starts up every time I start up ZBrush. So if I go into B here, you're going to see there is a, I guess it'd be under the move Accu right here. And once it's under Z startup, um, you can do Control Alt tap and then assign a hotkey to it. And then your hotkey will always work with, you know, any brushes you have in your Z startup. Uh, can't you mirror and weld without using the mirror and deformation? You can. Uh, the only reason I did the mirror first is if I do, if I turn off X and I'm like, oh, I did all this cool, let's do, I did all this cool stuff here. And now I've, if I do a mirror and weld now, it's going to mirror this side to this side. I don't want that. So I just did a quick mirror, mirror and weld. And then I got those two sides I wanted. But yeah, you can do mirror and weld. All it does is just mirror this side to this side. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. <laughs> uh, Blaine says, uh, wait, what smooth edges? Oh, um, if you want to, hold on, shift. Uh, if you go into Comic here to your brushes, there's uh, smooth peaks, smooth subdivision, um, smooth groups, smooth crease, smooth perpendicular. Uh, is it perpendicular? I think one of these, let's go to our weighted smooth mode here, direction. So you can kind of smooth in the direction. I don't use a whole lot of these. I know a lot of people that do, so play with these. Um, and I would imagine too, you can also, let's see if we can do this here. So I'm gonna mask this and then go into transpose and just kind of pull this out. And then we'll just use H polish to kind of polish that here so we have kind of an edge here. There we go. So now while I'm smoothing, I can uh, hold down shift and if you go into the depth, you can probably do a uh, turn on depth mask here. And then if you crank this one down, it'll only smooth concave. Let's try this one here. Yes, yeah, so you can make it so it'll smooth. You see how I'm, I'm smoothing? If I turn this depth mask off, uh, it just smooths everything. If I turn that depth mask on and I have this bottom pulled up, it'll only smooth that top. So if you, you can actually set up a smooth brush that'll only smooth and then when it hits an edge, it'll go, oh, I'm not touching that. It's just an auto mask feature basically. Um, so you can use that to your advantage. Um, there's also a smoothing algorithm. You hold on shift and smooth, it'll smooth a certain way. If you hold down shift and smooth and then let go of shift, it'll do a basically an averaging while maintaining your form, I think. So it's like, if you hold down shift and smooth, it's averaging in the X, Y, and Z space. So it kind of just melts everything. Um, if you hold down shift and start smoothing and let go of shift, it'll just smooth in one X, X and Y basically, not out or X and Z, depending on how you're oriented here. Hey, Robin, thanks for showing up. Um, let's see. Um, Cool, smooth crease. Yeah, smooth crease might be the one. Thanks, Thunder Bunny. Uh, like I said, I I don't use all those too terribly much, but uh, okay, let's go back, drag this back here. We don't need that little pod out there. Cool. Um, so now we've got these things broken up. Let's just turn everything else back on. Uh, these things here will start refining as well. Uh, let's see how much time we have. I only got a couple minutes left, but Basically, that refinement will be the exact same as this one we did here, which is basically probably rebuilding uh, the basic forms. And then we can use uh, DynaMesh Booleans to kind of punch these shapes in. We can use Insert Mesh Brushes to get those shapes uh, built out a little bit better. And then those will be really, really uh, tight and ready to go. So as we just continue through, we'll just keep refining and rebuilding and getting this thing up and running. But for now, she's kind of stuck with uh, just going through and refining this tech suit here. And then, you know, eventually getting to these boots as well. And the boots should be nice and fun. The boots and the gloves I'm looking forward to, those are usually pretty fun. Uh, but at this point, let's go ahead and crank our lazy radius up on our standard brush, crank our Z intensity up just a bit, and kind of go through and just kind of start dictating where I want these things to go. And just like the tech suit underneath, I'm gonna re this one's going to be a lot simpler, I think, to rebuild because it's not going to be a bunch of stuff like this. 
it's going to be uh, just pretty basic. So we're just gonna I'm just gonna do a quick uh, probably retopology would be my best bet in this case the z-sphere retopology we're doing and just rebuilding this really quickly and then Q meshing it back and if I do want to make any changes here it's like you know what we want to mask this out and kind of pull this back here uh, it's not a dynamesh anymore but you can still make pretty easy changes like that if you want to kind of add tabs or any kind of pull away stuff and eventually you can go through here and you can put like a little thumb grip on here or maybe some snaps or a bar over it if you'd like to and do any of that kind of stuff um, I think she's looking pretty decent let's go ahead and pull this up and over and as we're putting the other armor on I want to make sure and let's go ahead and merge these things down too. I'm going to take this one, this one, this one. I'm going to get them holding down shift and up arrow. I'm just going to merge these ones down here so I can just turn those off all at once. Oops, we need this one and this one too. There we go. So that's where the back little engine part goes. So as I'm refining this, I'm going to have to decide, okay, that's going to come up and around here. And then maybe I want to pop this piece off. So let's go ahead and actually looks like it comes out further here. like okay let's refine this piece even more so I'm going to take this one I'm going to mask it out and we'll hold down control alt and tighten that up and then we'll do control W isolate this we'll go ahead and do a split hidden now on this one I am going to go ahead and do a close hold now close holds is not a mirrored operation so I'm just going to do a quick mirror and weld you can hit W control tap and that'll go ahead and ice uh, mask that out you can pull this out just to give it a little bit of breathing room here you can also you can go through here and clip this stuff but I'm not overly concerned about this it's just to give it a little bit of thickness here and now I can go ahead and turn off project, turn off blur. Um, you don't have to turn off project when I'm doing creature stuff. I tend to keep project on and just keep my dynamesh very low as I'm working. But when I'm doing hard edge stuff, I tend to just turn that off. And then dynamesh this thing. Let's go ahead and crank that up. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. And now uh, we've got this piece separated out that we can kind of go through and just refine separately from the rest of the tech suit here. Just because I think this is a kind of a semi-important piece. Go through and inflate this side a little bit. I'm gonna kind of pop that out. I'm gonna go ahead and inflate this a little bit too. We'll pop this ridge out here. There we go. And then as I need to go through and rebuild this, perhaps, um, I can just go through and just tighten up the details a little bit and inform the shapes a little bit more. I can go through here with H polish and just kind of clean up these edges if I want to. I can also, um, you know, isolate this and then we'll do a control shift um, S to shrink back through and then control W that. So now we have uh, a midline here and you can do, you could have held that control shift and pulled out an extra poly group earlier as well. Uh, but now that you have these, you can go ahead and do a polish by features, which will kind of you know, and then if you go to the hard edge stuff, I talk a little bit more about that just to kind of clean up edges and stuff. This, again, this is kind of a blobby sculpt. So not a huge deal, but um, yeah, through one of them, uh, on my channel, I have a hard edge excerpt. And then on the Pixelogic channel, I think it's just kind of, it's in one of the videos where we go through and we talk about a ton of different hard edge slicing and dicing and extraction techniques. Mm. Does that bother me? If it does bother me, I can go into, let's say, BTO topology brush. And really quickly, I can just go, you know what, I need some topology here. And 
that's going to give me my outline. So then I'm going to select that one. I'm going to hide it. Now I can go to BT topology brush again. I'm going to put another line in here and now I can just add some quick topology across here just to kind of fill this in. I'm going to tap to give it thickness. I'm going to go ahead and do a split mass points. I'm going to shoot that to the top. Alt tap, shoot this one to the top. And now I can just deal with these two pieces here. And let's go ahead and move this back in and around. And you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to merge these things down now. Control drag. Now I'll go ahead and dynamesh. Now as I, as I was sculpting, you're going to see I had like the clay brush or age polish here. And if I go to auto masking, um, back face mask, it was pulling through. So if I have that off and I start sculpting, it's like, oh, it's working great. And then I'll dyno. It's like, oh no. So just go ahead and turn on back face masking. And now we can kind of sculpt this up and through. And now when I dynamesh, I'm fine. So now I can sculpt through an object with a big brush and not have it affect the back. And now I've got those extra pieces here all divided up and I'm good to go. Um, let's see, uh, how did you make the pattern on the fabric? Um, the wired pattern with all the squares. Are you talking about this one here? Um, because you can do this in the texture and this one was actually just rebuilt. Um, whenever this video goes up um, on their channel, which will be here. Let me see, can I just copy? No, I guess not. So in a couple of days, this video you're watching right now will be up on the, on the streaming channel here. And, huh, and um, you'll be able to see all that stuff. Basically, uh, long story short, there was a sculpt that I retopologized or on, in the case of this one, I just used slice and uh, just made these and then use panel loops through here so we can kind of get that all popped off. But I uh, definitely check back on that channel. Um, in a couple days and they'll have all of that up because I am out of time. Uh, but I hope you guys, hope I answered most of the questions. Hope it made sense. Sorry if I, if I miss any questions, don't feel like I, I did it on purpose for sure. I just, uh, I'm just kind of glancing through and uh, hoping I don't miss any. But anyway, we're getting there. We're slowly getting her up and running. She'll be, she'll be looking good as we continue to refine her. So I'm gonna say uh, y'all have a good day. And thanks for showing up, everybody. I'll see y'all. Uh, so Tuesday mornings here on Pixelag channel and then Thursday nights on my channel. Uh, you can come check me out. We can have some fun making some stuff. See you guys later. Have a good day.